On this video, we'll be covering the top 10 issues flight attendants have to deal with their supervisors on board their flights. Towards the end of this video, we'll be covering one of our experience that we lived first person, and this story could leave you shocked. So I really recommend you stay till the very end and check that story out. Hi, my name is Orlando. We do travel and aviation related videos. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Anyways, let's get down to business. Here we go. The way you serve customers is different depending on the class you're in. If you're in economy, you will be using a cart to deliver trays within the cabin to your passengers. If you're example in business class, it's more likely you'll be having trays on your hand and delivering two trays at a time. If you're in first class, you'll be probably doing it individually. When you're in economy class, you go into the cabin with one cart, you deliver 39 trays, and then you go back to the galley and take another cart and deliver those 39 other trays. When you're done with these carts, you have to collect the trays from passengers that are done eating. Some cabin crew are really, really quick, and some cabin crew are really, really slow because they wanna be slow, so they work less. One of the bad things is that the supervisors, because they're probably dealing with the medical case or they're writing something on their tablet, they can't really keep track of who's doing which cart. Some cabin crew get away doing two carts, which is nothing, and some cabin crew are forced to do five carts. The cabin supervisor doesn't know who that cabin crew is, and so this creates frustration and stress among cabin crew because the job, the work, is not distributed evenly among cabin crew. The second issue that you face uh, with supervisors on board is that when you make a mistake, if there's a small slip like serving one glass of water without the tray, I'm talking about Emirates here, yeah? Sometimes these mistakes get uh, forgiven on the spot. You get some feedback, you work on that feedback, you improve, it's done. But in other situations, the cabin crew thinks that everything's sorted out. But in reality, when that cabin crew goes back home and pops open his company email, he will find a report from that supervisor. And this report forces the cabin crew to go to the manager, see the manager on the next day, have a meeting and explain why that mistake. And usually some slip like this can end to warning and warnings nowadays in Emirates are punished, heavily punished. You lose your job for it. This is a reality that you will be facing. Now let's go to the third point, and this is something that happened directly to me. One of the things that is sort of like something considered a super no by the company is using your phone. I'm not saying that you should be using your phone. I'm saying that a lot of cabin crew do use their phones when they're on board, when they're flying. Sometimes they do get caught and this causes a little bit of distress. Whether they're like chilling out and they wanna use their phone, that's one reason. And sometimes they're just putting an alarm clock so they can wake up ahead of time so that you're ready immediately to start your shift and the crew that was on, on duty will go and rest. You, you do that 20 minutes ahead of time, but some people need a little bit more time they got to go to the toilet, they want to brush their teeth. That's what I did. I put an alarm clock, but I didn't get into the crew rest compartment. I did it outside. Passengers were asleep. I saw a cabin supervisor passing by and she looked at me in the eyes, but she didn't say anything. And then when I got back home, I found a report in my email and I had to go to the manager and explain why I was on my phone. Now let's go to the fourth point. Some cabin crew uh, avoid supervisors like the plague. And why? Because some supervisors are terrible. Mean on board, rude, fake smile at you, and then they backstab you. You never know what can happen. Some supervisors, since the very beginning of the flight, even in the briefing room before getting on board, some supervisors, you can really realize if they're a little bit cuckoo, or if they're like super, super strict, or if they're just mean. You can see it from the way they check uh, cabin crew nails, if they check like your shirt is a little bit wrinkled by the part that goes into your pants, which won't be visible anyway. And so you already know the vibes that that supervisor will be carrying out throughout the flight. When a cabin crew spots a supervisor that has this kind of profile, they will avoid them the whole flight. And this will also happen throughout the layover. On the flight or even in the briefing room, you'll say, because you're going to Amsterdam, for example. I know there's a nice museum. We can go grab a beer somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, something why not? Like that. Yeah. What do you guys think? So you yeah. create, let's say, a group of eight cabin crew that uh, want to go out and they all want to stick together. And you all like each other. But then suddenly that supervisor tags along. I am coming too. 
you know that that supervisor is crazy on board and even in the briefing room, you can't trust that supervisor. You just can't trust them. You can't feel confident in drinking a beer in front of her. You never know if she's counting the hours till the time that you have a next leg, you have your next flight, and she might report you for that. Like she might even get you tested. She might even make a phone call. You never know what she can do. So pretty much what happens is when one supervisor, one senior tags along and you don't like that person, the group suddenly breaks into thousands of pieces and suddenly it's nobody going out anymore. It's not eight crew going out anymore, it's maybe the supervisor with the purser. You will have to find an excuse to tell her on the next sector going back home why you didn't go out or what you did. You know, it's, it's just silly, but it happens. Fifth point, a uh, supervisor didn't keep track, probably because she was too busy. She didn't keep track of who was having their meal and who didn't. And so I sat down, started having my meal, and then the supervisor called me from the other galley. I was in the galley in the back of the aircraft. She was in the very front. She called me and she told me, come back, you gotta work, what are you doing? And I said, I just sat down and started eating. And she said, no, you already ate. I know that you already did come and work. And so I had to find witnesses around to explain that I didn't actually eat. Yeah, they are good at multitasking, but sometimes they multitask and they, they, they forget things or they can't keep track of things. So that's another thing that you will be dealing with and you gotta keep an eye out for that. Pain in the butt. Now let's go to the sixth point, and this is kind of ridiculous, but it did happen. You go on a layover, and the ramp agents, they don't they don't deal with suitcases in a very professional manner. They throw it, they, <laughs> I don't know what to do with them, but sometimes you end up at the layover and you see your suitcase having a hole, like totally punctured, and even your clothes are punctured, happened. And we were all like, whoa. Sometimes these locks on the side just come loose, they break, to make sure that nobody goes through it. Uh, potentially, it's not people stealing, but people placing things in your suitcase. Imagine someone from the hotel places some drugs into your suitcase or gunpowder or whatever. When that suitcase goes through airport controls, it's you who will have to explain why that stuff is in there. So in order for you to temporarily close it and fix it, you'll be using some tape. And that will temporarily fix this issue of you having broken locks. The problem is that when you remove this tape, some of it can stay attached to the suitcase. And the suitcase is dark gray, okay? So if you have like an orange tape, it's really, really visible. It will make your suitcase distinctive from all the other suitcases. And when I went on my next flight and that piece of scotch tape was still on the side of my suitcase, the supervisor reported me. I didn't have to go to my manager, but I had to remove the scotch tape and I had that into my profile. Why do that? Just tell me, hey Orlando, can you please remove that tape from your suitcase? Just ask. I'll sort it out for you, I have no problem with that. But no, she had to report me, I had to find out the, later, the next day on my company email. I mean, that's not professional, and, and Emirates doesn't do anything to punish these people. These people feel like they can do this. So because of stupid things like this, stupid actions like this, this some people are actually paying for it. Point number seven, something very similar happened to me, but not with uh, scotch tape, but with padlocks. There are certain destinations where we've seen, specifically Hong Kong, on Hong Kong flights, we've seen passengers go through our carry-on bags and stealing things. Our carry-on bags are designed where the main compartment of it is has two zippers, and these two zippers go into a lock, a combination lock. But there's two other areas of the carry-on bag that have zippers that are not protected by any lock. There's no combination, there's nothing. So anybody can have direct access to that. What I did is I added locks on both zippers. And yeah, the, the, the carry-on bag looks different from all the other carry-on bags because other carry-on bags don't have these locks. I'm not having Hello Kitty pink, white. It's simple golden color. And as I was removing them, the purser came along and said, no, he can have them. Yeah, and they started debating this, and then in the end it was fine for me. You never know what can go down. And another reason why you have to put padlocks on your suitcase is because some cabin crew, if they don't like you, they will put forks, cutlery, or, or I don't know, perfume from Duty Free, they'll hide it into your suitcase, and then when you check out of the airport and they find this item, they get you fired. This is the reason why we use padlocks on board, because not only passengers steal, but also cabin crew place things in your carry-on or steal from your carry-on and get you into trouble. Keep that in mind. The eighth point, this is one of the most common things and it's not a huge deal. Some supervisors are extremely strict and they follow the guidelines and the rules from A to Z. Cabin crew have been reported by supervisors because they gave things to that passenger without using the tray. A banana, a snack. I am supposed to pick up this plastic white tray 
place the glass on top of it, never touch or interact with the passenger, no contact. Kind of absurd, but I understand that this looks very premium and uh, I have nothing against it. Now we're getting to the two most juiciest points of this list. Before we do so, hit the like button and please leave a comment down below in the comment section just to let us know what your supervisors, your seniors on board do that get you completely mad and upset. We're really curious and maybe we'll do a video about it. If you're an Emirates cabin crew, just let us know. I, we're super happy to do another video about this. It's kind of funny. For example, some supervisors say, I'm easygoing when they get into the briefing room and those are the words. Guys, I am very easy going. Very easy going. You already know that those are going to be the worst. So never trust a supervisor that says that I'm easy going. Like never. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the ninth point. And this is uh, one of my worst experiences. Uh, one supervisor from Lebanon got really upset at me because I was being slow during my service. I was in probation. I think it was like uh, my second or third flight. So what do you expect? Probably he didn't even check how long I was in the company for. Or he didn't listen to the briefing when I said that this was my second or third flight. Anyways, he got really, really upset at me and he sat me down on a jump seat. No witnesses. Usually you have to have a witness when you're giving a debriefing. This is called debrief. And he started patronizing me, saying things that I actually didn't do. You see, you are rude. This would be a big problem for you. I will make your life <laughs> miserable on every single flight. From here I'm on, I'm not being rude. You understand? I'm not being rude. Halas, halas. He started saying that I was uh, incompetent, like really, really bad, bad things. And because I just joined the company, I didn't want to get into trouble. It was my probation. I didn't want to get kicked out of the company. I just apologized. A lot of supervisors have this power, this authority, and some of them don't know how to handle it. Some of them use it to their advantage just to feel one step above you. And some supervisors won't even listen to what you have to say because th their objective is only to run you down to feel better. So just don't waste your time with these people. If you get reported, bring this issue to your manager. At the end of the day, it's not worth it. And it's very rare to have someone that does this. Okay, we're getting to the 10th point. This is something that happens very, very often on board. And it happens more often for those supervisors that are extremely by the book. It's cabin supervisors forcing you to be in the cabin even before passengers have even boarded yet. Pursers and supervisors are at the door and they're constantly looking in the aisle to see if you are standing or not. And they want you to have also a smile. And in fact, they tell you hats on, smiles on. That's what they always say. And <laughs> we crew really, really hate it. They always force you to be in the cabin even though there's no passengers at the door yet. And you have to do this. You have to be in the cabin and you have to smile if you're told to, because if you don't, and that supervisor is one of those mean supervisors, you're gonna definitely start on the wrong foot and she's gonna pick on you for the rest of the flight, perhaps even the next sector, and probably report you. You don't wanna get off the wrong foot with a supervisor that is mean. Be as diplomatic as possible because you don't wanna have this nightmare throughout all the sectors of the flight, especially if you're going on a multi-sector. I'll give you an example. If you go from Dubai to Melbourne to Auckland and then from Auckland to Melbourne and then to Dubai, those are four flights. If you are dealing with a supervisor and you get off on the wrong foot since the very beginning of the first flight, you still have three flights with a supervisor. Good luck. Okay, so we're done talking about those 10 points because you've been so patient and you've been waiting for this story. Get ready because this is a very nasty story. I was flying on a flight from Dubai to Prague. One passenger got really intoxicated. He drank so much that he fell asleep and he, he was the last one to disembark. One of my friends and friend of friends as well, she went to the gentleman and woke him up and, and helped him up to leave the cabin. And this guy, because he was so intoxicated, he just hugged her. She couldn't get off of him. He kept hugging her and the cabin supervisor saw this and instead of saying something to the cabin crew, she went to the purser and reported to the purser. So there was a huge drama after the flight reported for touching and having physical interaction with one of the passengers while she didn't want any of it. She just helped the guy up. That is it. You'll often find uh, pursers and seniors reporting you for things that you actually didn't do and you'll have to try to explain your way out of that situation. If this escalates and it goes to the manager, it's probably a warning and maybe even a final warning because we know that uh, it's a Middle Eastern airline, physical interaction should be kept 
at the most decent level as possible. So there can be very, very big punishments. This actually happened on my flight so I can really corroborate it. Be ready that these things can happen and you have to be aware of the people around you, get witnesses, try to support your cause because in the end, sometimes you'll have to defend yourself. Now, remember that not all cabin supervisors are exactly the same. Some of them can be extremely mean and some of them can be totally chilled. We have many cabin supervisors that are friends of ours and uh, we wouldn't be friends with them if they behaved this way. Okay, so that's it for our video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you have anything to add to this video, if you want to talk about your supervisors being extremely mean or something extremely hilarious they did on your flight, just comment in the comment section below. I'm really curious about that. And uh, since you enjoyed this video, have a look at this other one where we mention other top five negative aspects of being an Emirates cabin crew or watch this other video where we talk about 10 top benefits of being a cabin crew.